evening, viewers, and welcome to this edition of NTV Sports Page. It's Monday, the 6th of September, and I'm Curtis Morton. In our headlines, Anderson Amadan top scores in losing cause. And in our feature for this evening, history created as the SKNFA gets its first female general secretary. We'll take this break, and I'll be right back. Nevis is safe. Nevis is ready. Ready to welcome the old, the young, and the very young like me. We are doing our best so you can enjoy your rest. The sun, sea, and sand of our beautiful shores awaits you. Well, I'm back and we start with cricket. The West Indies Rising Stars play their first match of the ongoing tour to the UK on Saturday, 4th September versus the England Under-19 team. Windy skipper Akim August won the toss and sent the home team into bat first. The youthful England team amassed a challenging 289 for 9 in the allotted 50 overs on the back of half centuries from their skipper Jacob Bethel, James Rue and Alex Horton. As I thought, Andel Gordon and McKinney Clark were the main wicket takers for the visitors. The Windies team, in response, folded for a mega 123 runs, led by Nivijan Anderson Amadon, who top scored with 33. That included five boundaries from 47 balls. He shared in a promising opening stand of 46 with Matthew Nandu, who scored 21. Thereafter, the Windies team went on a downward spiral to the eventual 123 all-out. They were mainly undermined by spinners Press and Ahmed, who picked up eight wickets between them for just 40 runs. Summarized scores, England under 19, 289 for 9 in 50 overs, Jacob Bethel, 69, James Rue, 59, Alex Horton, 53. Isaiah Thor, 3 for 51, Andel Gordon, 2 for 45, McKenny Clark, 2 for 58. Windy's Rising Stars, 123 all out in 30 overs, Anderson Amadan, 33, Matthew Nando, 21. Tom Press back to 5 for 18, Rian Ahmed, 3 for 22, and Fate, Fahe Singh, 1 for 28. England under 19s won by all of 166 runs. The two teams were set to clash again today, Monday, 6 September, in the second one there. The other matches, uh, Wednesday, September the 8th, third one day match, Friday, September the 10th, fourth one day match, Tuesday, September 14th, the fifth match, and Friday, September 17th, the sixth and final one there. Meanwhile, also on Saturday, a career-best bowling performance from Ram Harak, that's Karishma Ram Harak, led West Indies women to a magnificent victory over South Africa. The 26-year-old off-spinner came into the attack in the 15th over in her first match of the series. She took a wicket with her third ball and returned the superb figures of three overs, no maidens, three runs, three wickets, to receive the CG Insurance Player of the Match award. This limited the Proteas to a mere 80 for 9 from their 20 overs, and the West Indies then strolled to 81 for 5 from 11.5 overs to level the series one all. In reply, West Indies easily reached the target, closing out the match on 81 for 5. Speaking of Saturday, 4th September, we have the summarized scores for the two matches played in the CPL tournament on that day, with the Patriots losing their first game. SKN Patriots vs. St. Lucia Kings, summarized scores, St. Lucia Kings, 224 for 2, De Plessis, 120 not out, Chase, 64 not out, Ahmed, 1 for 23, Allen, 1 for 26, Beat St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, 124 all out, Lewis, 73, Gale, 14, Paul, 3 for 23, Joseph, 3 for 27, and so the St. Lucia Kings won by all of 100 runs. In the other match, Guyana Amazon Warriors versus Barbados Royals. Guyana Amazon Warriors, 136 for 1. Hemraj got 105 out of that, not out. King, 19. Young picked up 1 for 26. Beat Barbados Royals, 130 all out. Azam, 28. Chaz, 23. Tahir, 3 for 24. Shepard, 2 for 33. And so, the Amazon Warriors won 
by nine wickets. We'll take this break and I'll be back with our feature for this evening. Well, I'm back and tonight football is in the spotlight. History has been made as the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association has appointed the first ever female general secretary. More in this report from Andrew Heary, media consultant to the SKNFA. The St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association has a new general secretary, Ms. Tichelle McLean. She is the first woman to hold that position. Ms. McLean, in an interview Friday morning at Football House, gave some insights into her professional experience and her work in football. My name is Tichelle McLean. I am from the St. Peter's Football Club and I have just newly been appointed as the General Secretary for the St. Kitts Nevis Football Association. Now this is a very, very historic moment. Historic why? Because I am actually the first woman Genesec in St. Kitts, which is a very, very big accomplishment. I grew up in St. Peter's Football Club serving as secretary and as vice president for I think 22 plus years. I've also assisted St. Peter's Football Club in the last um, term as an advisor and then an assistant secretary or sorry, interim secretary. Being the first woman to hold the position of general secretary is a historic feat, one that Ms. McLean understands the significance of. For me personally, this is a big accomplishment and I feel honored to be serving in such a capacity. I must first say thank you to Mr. Harris for having that faith and confidence in me to believe that I can hold this post and, and deliver in regards to this mandate. For me, as a, whim, a woman in St. Kitts, it shows me that there is empowerment from the bottom up. And I believe that if you, what this sets for me is a precedence. It's basically saying that you can come from a club secretary to a general secretary of the SKNFA. Not only that, but as a woman player, and I'm making reference to a Atiba, it could show you that you can come from the grassroots up and actually become a president if you wish, but you have to have goals and aspirations. As part of her initiative and that of the new SKNFA executive, Ms. McLean is looking to bolster support to clubs and empowering players. Well, when Mr. Um, Harris, Atiba Harris, who is now the president of the association, when he was campaigning, his platform that he based on was to improve the administrative aspect of the SKNFA and also empowering women because, you know, women football is now on the rise all around the world. So we're going to push that for sure. We want to ensure that these programs have all the necessities needed in order for them to be effective. Uh, I'm speaking of in regards to the coaching aspect of things, the administrative aspect of things, the necessary gears and equipment needed for these and not only that too, but to empower our own product with our players, because that is the most important part of football, our players. Now, this is a team effort, and as such, the association with me as Gensec and our teams is what we're going to be pushing. There are also plans to focus on developing football on Nevis and improving women's football. Thankfully, we have an elected officer from Nevis um, on the campaign trail. There were two persons selected from Nevis to serve on the executive body, but one was duly elected. Now, what we're doing in going forward, we're ensuring that Nevis has a say, because it's only fear. And we have to remember that we get votes from Nevis as well, in regards to the 26 votes. Nevis brings three votes. So they show, or they, they have a support there. So I'm just letting you know that Nevis does have a voice, and across the board, everybody's voice will be heard. Um, I want to also look at the women aspect of football, 
as I said earlier in my interview that women football is on the rise right now. And I want to ensure that they have the same benefits like the men do in regards to the coaching. So I'm hoping to get more coaches involved from a women's standpoint because we have a lot of um, licenses being offered right now. Now, like I said, it's about a balance. So I would hope that whatever the, women, the men football team has, the women have the same benefits. So if they do have all that already, then I'm fine. But I'm just ensuring that across the board, there's always a balance between both. Ms. McLean replaces the outgoing general secretary from the previous administration, Mr. Stanley Jacobs, who served at the SKNFA for several years in that position. Her appointment comes on the heels of the newly elected SKNFA executive on Sunday at the 2021 SKNFA Ordinary Congress at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort. Well, that's our package for this evening. I am Curtis Morton reminding you that you can watch sports if you're not fit. But to play sports requires fitness diligence, and the sacrifice. Have a good night.